our hallelujah. Will you stand with me and we're going to praise and worship this morning.
hear it? Welcome to the Massapequa Park, Massa Park Church in Nazarene. Park Church in Nazarene. I'm not. I'm not in the church I'm today. Not, I'm not in the church today. I'm up, I'm up at my trailer. I'm up, I'm up at my trailer. In the woods. In the woods. And there's a mosquito. It's been driving me crazy. It's been driving me crazy. All day. All day. <laughs> I, there it is. I, no. There it is. No. Driving me nuts. Driving me nuts. This is why I go to church on Sundays, and I don't always come here. And I don't always come here. It's crazy. Let me tell you. It's crazy. It's let me tell you. Plum crazy. Plum crazy. Even my dog is nuts. Even my dog is nuts. Look at her. She don't know. She don't know. She's crazy. She's crazy. Well, anyway. Well, enjoy the service. Enjoy the service. I'm gonna get that mosquito I'm before get it gets me. Mosquito before it gets I me. I got my, I got my swat right here. I'm all set. I'm, I'm gonna set. win this battle. I'm gonna win this battle. Welcome to the Massapequa Park Church, Massa Church of the Nazarene. Church of the Nazarene. Have a great day. Have a great day. Can you hear it? Uh, there they go. There they go. Good job. Hey, I, I just have a couple of quick announcements. First, got to thank Bruce for uh, sending in those videos. So even when he's not here, he's here. And so he's, uh, he, he's up in his trailer this morning. Hopefully he's watching along. And so uh, I'm glad that, uh, that we're able to meet together on, on Sunday morning. So this is our first of two services. So we have our 9 o'clock and then we have our 11 and uh, I just have one or two quick announcements. If you've paid attention to your bulletins, you should see in there that, that we have a couple of small uh, gatherings labeled in there, things that are coming up. One specific one that I want everybody to take note of, September 13th. So September 13th, we're doing our church, a big church picnic, but it's going to be a little different this year. We're still going to do a big gathering, kind of. When I say big gathering, uh, we're, we're looking at probably about 50 to 75 people. But we're going to gather in the park. So we're going to have September 13th, it's going to be church in the park. So no services here, no 9 o'clock, no 1045. All of our services are going to be out in Brady Park. And we're going to ask people, it says, you know, normally we do food all together. We're going to ask you to bring your own food. So it's a, it's a social distancing picnic still. So we're still going to come together and we're still going to worship. We're going to have the, loud, the sound system for our, uh, for our music and preaching and all that. But it's going to be outside with some fresh air under the trees. I don't know about you, but that, that sounds exciting to me. So uh, uh, it'll be great. So feel free to, to invite your family and your friends if they want to come along. And so, but we're going to still follow our, the CDC guidelines and respect uh, the state guidelines that they're putting, they're, they're putting upon um, all gatherings. But put it in your calendars. Uh, also, for prayer requests or connect cards. So all of our prayer requests, if you have a specific prayer request, we're asking you to put it in. You can go online and on our website, at MPK Nazarene, you can put your prayer requests there. Or you can fill out in the beginning, in the first, first page of our webpage, go down to the bottom and there's a connect card if, you've, if you're just checking us out. Or if, uh, if you're watching online and, and you want some more information about our church or how you can be a part of it, uh, we have different ways that you can be a part of our church. We have a women's group, a couple of different women's groups. We have one that Joyce leads. We have one that Jessica and Jolene lead. We have some men's groups, some that meet online, some that meet in person with Sam. And so going through Ecclesiastes right now, and so uh, that's been really good on Wednesdays. There's, there's a, uh, a men's prayer time that come together. So there's different ways that you could be a part of our church. And so we're just asking you to, to, to stay connected, especially even in the midst of being separated, we could still be connected. And so, uh, so we're going to continue on with our service, but I wanted you just to remember those dates for September 13th uh, to, to put in your calendar. And at the end of August, the teens are going to be coming together. So if you know teenagers, uh, I'm going to point you in the direction of, of Petey. Yes. So she's excited. I heard something about s'mores, campfire, and social distancing. I don't know how that's going to fully take place. But something's going to happen. And so uh, I'm supposed to throw a little mystery out there. So if you have teenagers, 
uh, maybe you're watching online and you're like, well, okay, August, that means school's coming up soon. Uh, it's the end of August when they're going to be gathering together, getting ready for, for this upcoming different school year. So uh, right now we're going to continue on with some worship, and then after worship we're going to have a time of prayer together. So uh, uh, would, you, would you join us for, for, for some worship? Stand and join me again.
from those places, bones to armies. God is so amazing. Amen. Amen. <laughs> We're going to sing What a Beautiful Name. Let us tell of the Lord's greatness. Let us exalt. 
Father God, we come before you this morning. You are, you are powerful, you are wonderful, you are our savior, and you are in heaven covering all of us, but you are also just covering me, each one of us individually. God, you are amazing. I pray that we are filled by your spirit this morning and that you find glory in this place of worship. We give you the rest of this worship service. In your name we pray, amen. Well, good morning, church. I hope you came today wanting to hear from the Lord, amen? Uh, what I have to say is nothing compared to what God wants to say to us. Amen? So, uh, so my hope is that you and I uh, have come here ready to hear from God, to hear from his word, and that we are listening to all that God has to say to us today. Uh, not just to you, but I put myself there and say, God, I'm, I'm listening to you. So even if I'm here, I'm listening to you. Even though uh, I spent hours of putting, putting a message together, I'm still listening to Jesus, listening to his spirit. So I invite you this morning to listen with me as we go into God's word and say, Father, would you, by your spirit, Speak to us today. Would you change us and make us into the men and women of God that you have called us to be? Pray with me. Holy Spirit, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for this time of worship. We thank you that you are doing something new. Lord, we thank you that we are here today, that there is air in our lungs. Lord, we thank you for the ability to rise up and to worship you. We thank you for the promises that you have given us, Lord, and that we could take hold of it today. Lord, we thank you for the peace that goes beyond all understanding, that it is in your peace that we can rely on, that we could, be, that we could have hope, that it's your peace that is the cure to all anxiety, all worry, and all fear. Father, I pray and ask that you would speak to us today, that we've, we've come here, whether we're watching online or we're here together in this place, we are listening to you. Holy Spirit, would you speak now and change us? Lord, we love you and need you. We pray this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And all God's children said, amen, amen. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, and we're going to be looking through the verses of 17 to 32. Verses 17 to 32. If you have your Bibles, you can open it up. If you don't, uh, we will have it on the screen this morning as well as up here. But, but I want to take us through this because the last few weeks we have been going through the book of Ephesians. And we're going to continue on. We only have a few more weeks left. Uh, and in this book, it has been talking about how God is creating his church and his church is a masterpiece. And the Apostle Paul last week talked about, well, we, we talked about diapers. But we're not going to be talking about that today. But the Apostle Paul was talking about his people, God's people, being called to something new. Being called to a life that has changed. A different type of life. A life that's wonderful and beautiful. It is God's masterpiece, and that's the church. And so this morning, the Apostle Paul, as he speaks through verses 17 to 32, he says this in the beginning here. With the Lord's authority, I say this. Live no longer as the Gentiles do, for they are hopelessly confused. Their minds are full of darkness. They wander far from the life God gives because they have closed their minds and hardened their hearts against him. They have no sense of shame. They live for lustful pleasure and eagerly practice every kind of impurity. 
Do you understand that right here in this passage that Paul is making a very bold statement starting off? He is saying that they are Gentiles, but they are no longer Gentiles. To the people who are reading this, he says, listen, I know where you came from, but this is not who you are anymore. Because he makes a very clear distinction here. Notice how many times he's using the words they and their over and over again. They are hopelessly confused. Their minds are full of darkness. They wander. But, but the people he's talking to, the audience, are Gentiles as well. Well, at least nationally they are. They, they weren't born Jewish. But he doesn't recognize where they came from. Paul is making a distinction that you are not where you came from. Do you understand that you are not them anymore? They are different than you. He commands them to live different than the people from which they came from before. There's a distinction he's making between their past and their present. Their past is full of people who are, whose minds are confused, whose minds are full of darkness, whose wa minds wander from God. I don't know about you, but, but I, I can put myself in that boat before Jesus, and my mind was full of darkness. The things that I would think about, the things that I would care about, had nothing to do with God. He goes so far to say that they live for lustful desires. They live that way. This might be where you came from, but Paul is saying, this is not who you are now. This is not who I am now. Unfortunately, it might feel a little awkward while Paul's saying this because it's kind of like opening up the family tree and you're looking at your past and some of us don't want to open up our family tree because we're not really happy about where we came from. But Paul's doing it. He doesn't care. He's doing it on purpose because says, I want to call out what's been hiding in the closet. I want to throw it out there so that we can address it and we can finally move forward. Because sometimes we need to be honest about where we came from before we know where we're actually going. Amen? Amen. We have to be honest with that. And then in verse 20, he picks it up and he says this, but that isn't what you learned about Christ. Notice that the, the structure in the scripture is about to change. It was they and theirs and them and those people, those Gentiles, even though I'm a Gentile, but I'm not a Gentile anymore. He says, I'm not talking about Gentiles anymore. I'm talking about you. Because after Jesus, our pronouns change. I want you to get this. He says, but that isn't what you learned about Christ. Since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. Paul changes the pronoun from they to you, and he reminds them, listen, you have been taught differently. You know the truth. You've heard it. And this early church's understanding says they understand there's a distinction between where they came from and where they are now. They've gone through this process of hearing and receiving the word of God. And so Paul calls them out. He says, you know the stories. You've learned this already. So it's time to throw off the old. Oh, it's time to throw off the old. The old way is corrupted. It's corrupted by lust and lies. Do you understand that we were infected with a virus? It's like your computer, and, and, and I like things like this, right? So you, when your computer stops working and you realize that your motherboard is fried, okay, your computer is infected with viruses, you know you need to fix it, right? You need sometimes a new motherboard. You need a new source of power within you. 
Because what you had already is so corrupted and so done, you don't want to save it anymore. And so Paul is saying, throw it out. Throw it out. Your soul has been infected for so long. Why do you continue to run it? Why do you continue to walk in the same way you were once? So he pleads with the people to let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitude. He doesn't say, I want you to immediately do everything you can to change your habits and behaviors and do that. No, the first order of call that he has to the people says this. I need you to start here at this place. It starts by giving God the power to do what he wants to do in you. That you have to submit yourself to the spirit of the holy God to make us new. To, to make us into the people he's called us to be. The spirit of God is a healer, amen? Amen. We've talked about this before. We know this. We've seen it. Some of us experience the healing power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit restores us. He makes things new. The Holy Spirit is the power incarnate of God living inside of us. So he says, stop trying to change yourself. Allow God to do what he wants to do. Because it is by that power that you and I are going to be healed. Do you understand the Spirit of God is all about healing broken people? So sometimes you need to step aside and let the Holy Spirit do what he wants to do. Amen? And we declare that we declare this truth that we've heard it before. My God is a healer. My God can change me. I don't have to stay in the same patterns that I had before. I don't have to continue doing the same things that I once did. I can be different. I can be changed. I can allow God to make me into the man that he's called me to be. He can make you into the woman that he's called you to be. But we have to let the Spirit of God do oh, what he does. The Spirit of God restores. The Spirit of God renews. The Spirit of God washes over us. And it's not by force, oh, but it's by his calling us into a deep and beautiful relationship with him. Amen? He takes dead things and gives it Life. We sang about that today. Amen. We sang about how God all throughout time has this ability to take that which is dead and give it life. To breathe life into that which is dead. Do you understand that his healing power, his renewing abilities. It says that he renews our thoughts and our attitudes. He makes new, he restores, he freshens life. He takes the dead things and breathes new life into it. This is what our God does. I want you to hold on to that thought for a second. I'm just going to put a little pin in that moment because I'm going to come back to this. Because I want us to understand that he gives us life. And that's where this starts. And we understand that the list of corrupted behaviors that's, that's being expressed is primarily an internal list that Paul is talking about. All these things are happening inside of us, the lust and the lies, that the mind that was affected, the heart that was infected, the soul that was infected, God is going to do something inside of us. So the Holy Spirit deals with this internal infection and he brings us life. The scripture says that it's not just the Holy Spirit, though. It starts with the Spirit. I'm going to go back to that verse again and, and where it says, but that isn't what you learned about Christ. Since you have heard about Jesus and you have learned the truth 
that comes from him. Verse 22 says, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. And verse 24, put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. Don't just throw off the old, which is your responsibility. Don't just allow God to get place into you, but, but there's something else you have to do. You have to put on your new nature. That God has given you a new way to live. He has called you to live a new way. And that's intentional decisions that you and I need to make to put on these new clothes. I'm not just letting the Spirit do what he does, but I'm obeying my God and saying, I'm going to do what I need to do to that which you have called me to be. I will not only throw off my old sinful nature, my former way of life, but I'm going to put on something new. That requires us to have this intentional mindset that I need to change what I'm putting into me. What we put into us will come out of us. If I'm going to allow God to renew me, I have to put, I got to put up a little wall and say, what am I allowing into my life? Because whatever I'm feeding into my soul is going to come out. And if I'm called to put on a new nature, I got to be careful what I'm putting into me. There's an expression that's been used long before I've ever stood here in this place. It was garbage in, garbage out. If you're putting garbage into your soul, only garbage is going to come out. If you're surrounding yourself with movies and music and things that, 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 that remind you about hor how horrible life is or, or, or uh, depressing thoughts and attitudes, you're going to start speaking those things out. If you're surrounding yourself with people who are always negative and constantly putting down people, constantly using language that, that you know doesn't glorify God, and it's like, man, this is hard for me to be around. And all of a sudden, you find yourself, you're doing the same thing because you're putting these things into you. You're feeding your soul. And, and unfortunately, eventually it all comes out somewhere. And so whatever we put into our minds, it's going to start to come out. Uh, I kind of think it's funny. It's, again, computer nerdy stuff. Like, I think about algorithms, right? A lot of us get frustrated where if you're online and, and all of a sudden you have a Gmail account, right? And, and you look up for the first time, you're like, you know what? I'm really interested in buying some new bed sheets. And then next thing you know, you have like four or five different ads popping up on your computer talking about different bed sheets and who's having sales for bed sheets and all this stuff. Because it's the computer has an algorithm and it's, and it's understanding. It's taking your information, your data, and it's, it's saying, hmm, I, I, this person is interested in this. And so it's going to put this information back out to you because what I'm looking for, I'm going to get. And there's this algorithm within life that happens that if I'm continuing to put negativity into me, hate into me, and I'm surrounding myself with things that hurt my soul, I shouldn't be surprised if that's what's coming out of me. I shouldn't be surprised then that's what the algorithm that I've created for my own life. He says, put on your new nature to clothe yourself with the clothes that Jesus has for you. And, and it's interesting because he says, these clothes make us look like Jesus. He goes into a list later on, but we're going to get there in a second. He says, they're, they're, they are good deeds, acting kindly to those who don't deserve our kindness, showing compassion to those who need it, extending forgiveness. These are the clothes that Jesus wore, amen? Amen. These are the clothes that Jesus showed us how to live. He says, put on those new clothes. Stop picking up your old clothes. Throw it out. 
Put on some new clothes. Have you ever gone shopping? When, when you're at a point, when you had your favorite shirt or your favorite pair of jeans or dress, and you noticed one day that that dress or those pants, they were a little too see-through for your comfort now, right? You've worn it out. It is done. It is beat up, right? When I'm looking at my jeans and I can see my skin coming through, that's my sign that these old jeans are done. It's time to get some new clothes. So I go shopping and I'm looking, but, but these were my favorite pair of jeans and I've worn them from, for, for as long as I could remember. And I'm, and I'm thinking, ah, I don't want to get rid of these jeans. I really like these jeans. They're comfortable. They fit well. I, I know how I look in my jeans. But it's time for a new set of jeans. And what Paul is saying here, some of you, it's like you, knew, you have a new set of jeans ready for you. So instead of taking them off, you're just trying to wear the new jeans on top of the old jeans. And, and that doesn't work. It's really uncomfortable, actually. <laughs> Imagine if you had a brand new dress and you put it on top of an old dress. It wouldn't fit right. It was not crafted and built and woven. It intended to be worn on top of it. That we need to be willing to lay down, to get rid of our old clothes. Do you understand that this was something that was personal to Paul? This isn't the first time he's talked about it in Ephesians. He actually brings it up. I don't have that scripture verse, but, but if you have your... Bibles, you can look at it another time. But Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7 is a famous passage in there where it talks about this. I struggle. I do the things that I don't intend to do. The things that I don't want to do, I do it. And I don't understand why. In, in, in verses 21, he says this. I have discovered this principle of life. That what I want to do, what is right. That when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. Anybody been there? That you want to do what's right, but, but you're doing what's wrong. And you find yourself doing this. Verse 22, he says this. I love God's law with all of my heart. But there is this, there is an, another power within me that is at war with my, my mind. Do you understand that he's, he's, he's reminding us. He says there's a battle going on upstairs with our hearts, our minds, our attitudes inside of us. It is at war with us. And this power makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. Oh, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? Verse 25. Thank God that the answer is in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank God that the answer is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. That Paul understands this is a personal struggle for me. So what I'm calling you to do, what I'm asking you to do, doesn't go beyond something that I haven't experienced myself. This is hard. This is heavy. This is something that I struggle with. I keep doing things that I shouldn't do. But the answer, the answer is always going to be Jesus. It's Jesus, it's Jesus, it's Jesus. It's always going to be Jesus. It's time for us to throw out what's old. In verse 25, back in Ephesians, it says this. Here's some old clothes that you keep putting on. Stop telling lies. Do we have that on there, verse 25? Verse 25, stop telling lies. Let us tell our neighbors the truth. For we are all parts of the same body. And don't sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you're still angry. For anger gives a foothold to the devil. There's some of us who allow our anger to be a place for the enemy to work in our lives. Amen. Verse 28 says, if you are a thief, quit stealing. Instead, use your hands 
for good, hard work. And then give generously to others in need. Don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. And do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Remember, he has identified you. We're back to the U's. Oh, I want us to hold on to this. He has identified you as his own, guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. This, this should be like our praise moment. This should be like, if I said nothing else, this is it, right? That he has identified you as his own, guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. Paul opens up this list of all these old clothes and saying, lying, your anger, your stealing, your mouths, the language that's coming out. Do you understand? All of this is old clothes. It's time to be done with this. Stop cursing people out. Stop giving the devil a foothold. Giving him control of you when you're angry. You can't live with two masters. Stop lying to people. Like honor the truth. Be hungry for the truth. And finally, don't hurt God. And, and I think this is one of the most powerful moments for us to, to really consider and wrestle with because you understand Paul's saying here, Constantly, the scriptures, it's, it's spoken in relational language. And sometimes we forget, we forget how real and how vulnerable God is towards us. He uses language like, I love you, I cry out for you. He uses images of, of, of mother hens wrapping his wings around his children and guarding them. And, and, and I know this, like... I'm probably the most vulnerable to my kids. Man, they, they can do damage to us. Because we've opened ourselves up to loving them. And, and Paul says, don't bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Do you understand that God is not going to pour shame onto you for what you're doing, for putting on these old clothes He's not saying, well, you're a horrible person. He's not speaking that over you. But instead, when you do that, you're hurting the Father. And that should move us. That changes everything. This is not a system of shame and guilt. This is a relationship of love that he's called us to. And we need to remember what we are doing, the clothes that we are wearing. And we need to be willing to say, I'm going to throw it out and I'm going to put on something new. I am going to stand up and be who God has called me to be. Somebody who is set apart. I once was a Gentile, but I'm not a Gentile anymore. I was like this at one time, but that's not who God has called me to be. I wore those clothes, but I'm wearing new clothes today. You were created to be like God, like your heavenly Father, to live a holy life. And we don't live according to the same values of this world. Amen? This world desires and longs for other things. In verse 31, he goes through this, this broad spectrum of a list. He says, get rid of all bitterness now, rage, anger, harsh words and slander. This isn't an exhaustive list. As well as all types of evil behavior. So whatever you think is evil, all this stuff, you got to get rid of it. And instead, be kind to each other. Tender-hearted. Forgiving one another. Just as God, through Christ, has forgiven you. 
You are called to wear the clothes of Jesus. So throw out the old, Paul says, and dress yourself in Jesus' clothing of kindness, his clothing of forgiveness, his clothing of tenderheartedness. Now, I understand some of us are going to struggle with this, and it is difficult. Paul wrestled with this because we, we're torn. We want to wear both sets of clothes, but there comes in a point where you have to get rid of that old shirt. It's done. It is not you. It is not for you anymore. We need to remember that it is possible to be who God's called us to be. Remember how I said to put a pin on this one little thing that it's his spirit? We said earlier that the spirit of God is our renewer, right? He makes us new. His power is what does it. The change only happens by his power. I can only do these things by his spirit. We said that his power changed our pronouns. We went from they and them and theirs to you, to a child of God. That the power of God gave us life to do things differently in the world we live in. Paul understands you're still here, but you're not. I mean, you're present, but we're different. Um, I, I, I don't like seafood. and Many of you know this. But I enjoy going fishing. You know, it was, it's something peaceful about it. And, and I enjoy it because then I get to bless somebody with whatever I catch. And uh, when, when we were out in Oregon, there were so many beautiful rivers and creeks. It's just, my goodness, if you love nature, that's like, that whole state is just, it's like, yeah, it's wonderful. So anyways, we lived near Eugene. And I remember uh, uh, one of the guys that I lived with, he, he had said, hey, we're going to go out fishing, and uh, I know a little creek that we can go to that runs into the Willamette. And so, so you're just driving on a highway, and, and, and literally you just pull off to the side of the road, and you're there. That's it. And you just walk down, and you find this beautiful creek. It felt like it was abandoned, and, and nobody's ever touched this creek for years. And it's just us two, and we're fishing. And, and, and I say it's a creek, but it's probably a lot more powerful than a creek because there were fish all over the place, and, and it was deep, and and what, when I would catch something, I'd give it to my buddy. And, and he reminded me of something. You know, sometimes God speaks to us in some of the most unique places. He, he reminded me that uh, dead fish, they just kind of float downstream. But it takes live fish to go up against the current. It takes a fish full of life to go against the current. The power of his spirit has changed us from dead to living and he has empowered us to go against the current that is in this world, the things that pull us away, the things that want to draw us further and further from God. God himself has said, I have given you new life to fight the currents in your life. I have given you new life to go upstream. That you have called to be a living being. One that is full of the power of his Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen? You don't have to flow downstream anymore. We're not dead. We are alive in Christ. So may you leave this place knowing that you are, have been fully empowered, that if you believe in Jesus, if you have received his Holy Spirit, you have the power to live the way that he has called you to live. So throw off that old way, that old set of clothes, 
And this morning, put on some new clothes. In Jesus' name, amen? Amen. Would you pray with me? Father God, we want to be men and women who are alive and full of your spirit. God, we do not want... Lord, we don't, we don't want to live like dead fish. Jesus, we don't want to live without your power. And we feel the realness of the struggle that we do things, and we're like, why do I do this? Why do I keep sinning? Why do I keep falling into these patterns of my old life? Lord, we, I pray right now, that you would have total control of us. Holy Spirit, if there are things where we have said, no, not about this area, not here, God, I pray that we would step aside, we would bow our hearts, bow our minds and say, Jesus, you are the answer. You are the answer for change. You are the answer for hope. I pray that you would dress us. Oh, Lord, that you would dress us, that we would take on these new clothes. Lord, that we would feel your power in and through us. And Lord, we would actively choose to love those you've called us to love. That if there's people in our life that we're like, these people are ridiculous, I pray instead of speaking that out, that we would speak love to them. Hope, kindness, and mercy, and compassion. I pray that we would live the lives that you have called us to live and we would stop doing what we used to do only through your power. Lord, if there's anybody here in this place or watching online who has not experienced your power, has not experienced or received you into their lives, we pray right now. Lord, we ask that you would come into our hearts that we would receive you as our Lord and Savior and that we would be changed and we would say, you are the King of kings and my Lord of lords. Lord, we pray for changed lives, holy lives, mended lives in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we pray. And all God's children said, amen, amen, amen. Thank you guys for joining us this morning and for worshiping with us in this time. Go now in the grace and the peace of the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.